everyone, this is Shua Fan, Application Engineer at Sontech. And today in this video, I want us to go over briefly what you can expect to see in the box when you order a Sontech RS580CP. And then we're gonna go over step-by-step -step through basically a visual quick start guide. How to connect the RS5 to all its various components, stick it in the board, and get ready to actually take your measurement by connecting to your laptop. All right, so let's just get started with what you can expect in the box. Um, today I'm gonna to showcase basically the full-blown package, including the GPS option, the geode DGPS option, as well as the HydroBoard Micro, along with its carrying case back there. All right, so in the box, box itself, you're going to see the RS580 CP, and you're gonna have a couple little connectors on the back. And you're also going to see two lithium rechargeable batteries for the RS5 system itself, along with the battery charger and various cables and um, accessories to charge the batteries. Uh, if you order the GPS, you're going to see obviously the Geo GPS, and it's going to also come with its own charging cables and accessories as well. Uh, with the Geo GPS, you're going to see this small cable that connects the geode to the RS5 itself. Along with cabling, you're going to see this radio extension cable. Now this extension cable is meant to go from the RS5 system to one of these radio antennas. Now you're gonna see two radio antennas in the box. And again, one of them is meant to go on the RS5 or to that cable that I was talking about earlier. And then the other one is going to connect to the USB dongle and you're basically going to screw that right in and turn the antenna up, stick it into your laptop, and that's how you connect your laptop to the RS5 itself. All right, so that's what's in the box. Now why don't we go through step by step how to actually connect the whole system, put it on the board, and get ready to take your measurement. Now if you are taking a measurement without GPS, you're welcome to leave this battery, uh, this GPS cap on. Now these connectors are all IP67 rated, so waterproof. But you know, if you are not using this connector for GPS, if you're only using bottom tracking, then it's probably best just to keep it on so that sand and debris and whatnot doesn't get into the actual connector itself. So just a good way to keep it clean. All right, so you've got your RS5. And what I usually like to do is to connect this extension cable to the RS5. I'm going to connect it here and it's up to you. You can connect it before you put the battery in or after. Um, sometimes I find that it's actually easier to connect the, uh, put the battery in first, especially if you, if you have larger hands. So let's put the battery in right now. And you're going to see on this battery cap, once you unscrew it, this black line, which kind of looks like a power symbol, but it actually is supposed to designate a negative uh, polarity for the battery. So negative is going to go on top, positive is going to go in on the bottom. And again, make sure your batteries are all charged up. It takes a couple hours to have a full charge on the battery. And stick it in and we're just going to close that cap and tighten it as much as we like. And then we're going to look at this little LED light on the back of the connector and we're going to see it blinking, which means that we have power going to the system. So once we're happy with that, we've got our cable on, we can actually stick this RS5 directly into the HydroBoard Micro. Now you're going to notice that there is a little arrow on top of this cap and it's pointing up here. That's a positive X direction. Now if you're doing a, a moving boat measurement, you actually don't need to worry about the orientation of the ADCP. So if you are doing a stationary measurement, you do have to worry about the orientation. So that's where the arrow comes in. But, you know, for normal moving boat measurements, don't worry about it. You can stick the RS5 in any orientation you want. So I've put it into the board and you'll notice that I haven't put the stand up yet. This is a GPS bracket or GPS stand. And I find that it's much easier to keep it kind of at an angle or even down when I'm mounting everything, just to give a little more real estate here to connect all the connectors. All right, so once I have that in, I'm actually going to attach the radio antenna to the end of this cable. So the radio antenna goes on this little hole here on the top of the bracket. So just as a reminder, we are using Bluetooth here. And so water is a great attenuator of Bluetooth. So the higher up that you have the antenna, 
the better chance you're going to have of a better connection. So what I usually do when I take my field measurements is by default always to mount the antenna up here. Now again, you can mount this directly onto the RS5 itself. Some people like that better just for a cleaner solution if you're not using the GPS. So various options that you have. All right, so let's get on to mounting the geode onto the bracket itself. Now I find it much easier to put this cable on to the ge uh, geode first before putting it on the bracket. Now you'll notice that this DB9 serial connector is a little bit bulkier than you're normally used to, and that's because this is made to be waterproof. And so it does have a little bit of extra material that you kind of have to push in a bit and really cinch down these screws here. And sometimes you can even use a, a flathead screwdriver just to tighten these screws. So once you have this in, just give it a tug, make sure that it's securely in, and that'll be watertight for you. So once that's in, you can then place this geode onto the bracket. Now this bracket will come with this little thumb screw with a black cap, and that's going to screw in directly into your geode system. So let's screw that in. And at this point, we can connect the geode cable to the RS5 system itself. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now that our geode is connected, our RS5 is in the board. We are basically ready to go. We'll put the GPS stand up and tighten that. And we're ready to go. Now, if you're in low flow situations, like the one behind me here, um, you can actually take these fins of the board and open up this latch and basically put the fins a little bit deeper into the water so that you have a little bit of better traction um, to direct the, the boat in to the flow. Now, obviously this isn't ideal for shallow environments. And so you do have the option then to have the more shallow configuration so that the fins don't stick that deep into the water. So at this point, you have your system set up and you have it powered. Um, the geode here needs to be turned on. And just as a reminder, this does have its own power and it does have a battery inside, which does need to be charged and it's separate from the RS5 batteries. And just a word of caution, um, you will again see these two different battery chargers. And one of them is meant for the RS5 and one of them is meant for the geode. Now, unfortunately they look very similar, but they cannot be interchanged. So if you wanna just go ahead and label these right now, the RS5 charging apparatus comes with this cable hooked on to the adapter directly. So this is for the RS5. And for the geode, the cable is not actually physically attached, but you can attach it through the USB. So again, geode, RS5. Now feel free to label that and please don't interchange them because we'll ha you'll have trouble charging the geode if you do. So just a word of caution there. All right, so once you're ready here, uh, we're going to basically connect the USB dongle again to this antenna. And we're going to connect this to the laptop and I'll show you step-by-step step how to use RSQ to then connect to your RS5 system and get ready for your measurement. So come on in. All right, so when you put your USB dongle into your laptop, you should see a blinking green light that signifies that it's working properly. So on the screen here, I have RSQ, the software platform for RS5, uh, up and running. And I am going to connect to the RS5 system. So I'm gonna hit the connect button and click scan for devices. Now the scanning is in progress and it's actually picked up a couple RS5s that we have in the field today. Um, this bottom one is the one that you ha have seen in the video. So I'm gonna double click on that and I'm connecting to it. So once I've established the connection, I'll go to new data collection and I can pick either moving boat or stationary to proceed with my measurement. Now, once you have your parameters set up in RSQ, you're basically ready to take a discharge measurement. But that's a video for another day. So there you have it, folks. That's your video quick start guide. Uh, I'm Shua Fan, application engineer at Sontech. If you have any other questions, 
Feel free to either visit our website, Sontech.com, or email us at inquiry at Sontech.com. Hope to see you soon out there. Bye-bye.